Netflix continues the return of the rom-com, more specifically the teenage rom-com. Let's see how this one turned out. Okay, so the perfect date. Now, like I said in my intro to this video, uh, Netflix has played a huge part in kind of bringing back the rom-com, bringing back that romantic comedy that we've all come to know and love, you know, with all the predictable beats and cheesy one-liners, all that fun stuff. And I've been totally for it because they've actually come out with some really good romantic comedies. You know, they've come out with films like Set It Up, uh, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, uh, Sierra Burgess is a Loser, The Kissing Booth, just very cute teen romantic comedies. They've had a lot of these really teenage rom-com hits hit their platform, and The Perfect Date is definitely one that fits perfectly in their lineup. And another rom-com that stars Noah Centineo, who's been their kind of like go-to rom-com male lead, who essentially is a young Mark Ruffalo to a scary degree between his looks and his voice. It's uncanny. Now, in The Perfect Date, uh, Centineo plays a high school student who's trying to get into Yale, but uh, he doesn't really have the money to get in, so he has to try to find a way to kind of financially support himself so that when he does apply and if he does get in, that he can actually go there. And then one day he offers to take a fellow high schooler's uh, cousin to a dance for money, and afterwards he kind of gets the idea to kind of design this app with his buddy where a girl can pick, you know, their specific date and kind of turn him into anyone they want him to be. So if they want an artsy hipster, they get that. If they want someone to listen, they get that. If they want someone who's a douchebag so their parents are more accepting of someone who they really want to be with, they get that. I mean, it's very interesting. It's very entertaining. Uh, and he uses this app as a way to get money to try to go to Yale. But of course, along the way, he realizes he doesn't know who he is because he's playing so many different versions of himself. And this is another one of those rom-coms where you know all the story beats. You know exactly where the story's gonna go, you know who he's gonna end up with, you know, you know exactly everything that's going to go down. But w as with any rom-com, any predictable rom-com, you just hope you enjoyed the ride and you just hope that you have a good time with the movie. And I think The Perfect Date very much succeeds in that regard. This is a movie with a really great performance from Noah Centineo, who's definitely proving to be a very charming romantic comedy lead. And Laura Morano plays his, you know, rom-com, you know, other half, who you know he's gonna end up with. I mean, you know he's gonna end up with her. It's not really a big spoiler to say that. And this movie actually took me by surprise because I kind of went in with low expectations because, you know, these teenage rom-coms with Netflix, some of them are, you know, uh, cheesy in a good way. Some of them are cheesy in a bad way. Uh, and a, a few of them are able to walk that line really nicely. And I think that this one is definitely more witty than the past ones that they've come out with. I think the script is solid. I think there's some really good banter, especially between Centineo and Murano. Those two have really good chemistry together and they make for a good rom-com pair. Yes, those two have really good chemistry, but what I really loved that, th that this movie explored and it explored it in a really nice way was how when you're playing so many different versions of yourself, you kind of lose who you are and it's very hard to discover who you really are when you're pretending to be someone that you're not. And yeah, that's a story we've definitely seen handled before in some good movies, some really bad ones, but I really do like the way it was handled here because because you know, this is someone who at the, you know, the outset of the movie really kind of really didn't know who he is. He's trying to write a, you know, a college admissions letter kind of telling them who he is and why he wants to be going to their school. And he can't really put his thoughts into words because he really doesn't know who he is. But by the end of the film, you believe that he kind of figured out who that is and who he is at his core. And you believe it and you buy it. And Centineo definitely kind of nails that arc. And the movie is just very fluffy. It's very entertaining. It's a very, very easy watch. I mean, this is designed for a Netflix watch. I mean, all these different versions of himself that he plays, you know, you could tell Centineo's having a lot of fun playing these characters, you know, the douchebag, the, the hipster, the guy who's just there to listen. There's one where he kind of like acts as like a dating coach. I mean, all those scenarios are fun, they're entertaining, but I'm, I'm glad that they didn't take you know, the kind of spotlight of the film where it focused too much on those kind of caricatures that he was playing and not, you know, spend enough time on who he is as a person and kind of his personal relationships with his best friend and, you know, this uh, budding love interest that he subconsciously knows that he likes. And definitely one of my favorite parts of the movie is the relationship that his character has with uh, his father who, you know, he's kind of fallen on tough times. His wife left him. He's trying to kind of become that like literary icon that he once was. And their relationship's really great. You know, Matt Walsh, uh, who plays his dad, is terrific. And I think that those two have really great scenes together and it's a really warm, you know, nurturing relationship. And, you know, those scenes kind of feel like a nice warm hug and you really buy that relationship. And, and I think that those two are great together and it's one of my favorite parts of the movie. As for flaws with any rom-com, it's extremely predictable. I mean, you, you can call these story beats coming from a mile away. Though I will say there's one swerve 
toward the end of the film that I really enjoyed because it was a nice way of kind of flipping your expectations of the typical romantic comedy, and I really enjoyed that. I won't say what it is exactly, but when it happened, I was really pleasantly surprised, and I was, like, cheering for the movie. I was like, good for you. Way to make that move. But yes, it's very predictable. There are some jokes that don't quite work, but I really do like this movie. I think it's a nice, fluffy, entertaining you know, uh, very easy watch. I think it's got a really kind of fun, witty script. I think it's got some great performances, some really good chemistry between our two leads. And it's just a good time. If you've been a fan of this kind of uh, romantic comedy renaissance on Netflix or the teenage romantic comedy renaissance that they've been kind of uh, stirring up, I think you'll definitely enjoy this one. But in the end, I'm going to give The Perfect Date, I'm going to give this movie a B+. I really enjoy this movie. I think it's got some, you know, above average writing for a movie like this. It's got some good performances. It's very entertaining. I like the fact that the story goes to some place that you don't quite expect. And I do really like the character arc for our main lead. And I just had a good time with this one. It's, you know, if you're looking for just a fun watch on Netflix, you know, over the weekend, definitely give it a go. I think you'd actually really enjoy it. I'm someone who's just a sucker for romantic comedy, so when another one hits Netflix or, you know, hits theaters, I'm always gonna be there. Even if it's horrible, I'm, I love romantic comedies. I'm an unabashedly huge fan of romantic comedy. So that is my review of The Perfect Date. Let me know what you thought of the movie in the comment box below. Make sure to subscribe for more movie reviews, TV reviews, more fun content. Think you won't regret it. And until next time, everybody, I'm Tom Chattelbash, E2's most reliable movie critic.